Hello and welcome to Community Conversation, the show that's for and about the people who live in Reading. My name is Kevin Vent and I'm going to be your host for this episode. And in this episode, I have two people that are kind of starting a new group, new program in town called the Reading Neighbors Network. So we have Tom Model and Marianne Kinnan. Nice to hear you here today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I want to kind of start with you, uh, Tom. What is the Reading Neighbors Network? It's a group that has come together to help support people who are interested in aging in place in Reading hmm. and in the process create a sort of venue for socialization and sharing of information related to aging and staying in your own home and at the same time make Reading an age-friendly community. Okay, so, so how do you go about uh, uh, supporting people who want to stay in age in place in their homes? What, what kinds of activities do you do? You mentioned socialization, but what kinds of specific things do you do? Well, it is, it's a club format, basically. Okay. And we've structured ourselves after an organization that's been operating in Lexington since 2008 mm -hmm. called Lexington at Home. They have four chapters of four, about 40 people each, about 160 total. Uh, we have just launched as of the 12th of June, and we have about 40 members. So okay. we will be moving along slowly so that we make sure we train is running on the track, so right, to speak. Right, right, right. But it's bringing people together that have common interests, not only in the fact that they are, we're all aging, hopefully, that's the good news. <laughs> And um, as they age, they want to remain in their own homes as, t as opposed to the alternatives, which are mm -hmm. to go off into more institutional settings like sure. continuing care retirement communities and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, we'll meet in people's homes and there'll be programs. It'll be monthly meetings and it's, it's not a requirement, uh, but hopefully people will be drawn together by common interests, both sure. in the underlying theme and we're going to form interest groups. Mm -hmm. Everything from coffee clutches to kayaking to theater attending and so forth. Okay, so coffee clutches and kayaking, very diverse <laughs> uh, interests. How does that kind of socialization help someone uh, stay at home and be able to age in place? Marianne, you're a nurse and have that right. background, so why don't you comment well, on I that? Well, I think a, a lot of what um, Tom just said feeds into this concept. First of all, I think most people want to stay in their own homes. If they have mm -hmm. that option, they'd rather be in familiar surroundings and sure. continue with their independence. Um, as a healthcare provider, I know that's a very important piece to helping people, as is socialization. And mm -hmm. many studies have shown that people who have a good social link, social network, thrive and do far better either emotionally, mentally, physically. Um, and I think all of us as people want to uh, be with other people and also want to have the benefit of some educational opportunities, learning opportunities, and abilities to kayak or, or, or read or go to the theater, whatever it sure. happens to be. Um, so this group will provide all of that as well as a support system for other needs uh, mm -hmm. as time goes on. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're fairly new to the group. I kind of what motivated you to get involved? Well, several things actually. First of all, I have a friend who is on the steering committee. We've okay. known each other many years and we were both in health care. Um, the, what the group is hoping to provide interests me very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and also I think the, one of the, the problems that people have as they age and, and otherwise is that they don't have a support system when they may need it. Okay. And uh, f even briefly, mm -hmm. for example, someone to run an errand, someone to take them to a physical therapy appointment, something like this. That interested me a lot, to be able to have that, uh, um, that opportunity available if and when I needed that. Right, right. It's, it's an anecdotal support kind of thing. Okay. It's not meant to replace services. I mean, sure. we've been working with Jane Burns here from Reading, uh, mm -hmm. Administrator for Elder and Human Affairs, and Dan O'Leary from Middle S Mystic Valley Elder Services. They provide services in a formal sense through the government and right. that kind of funding. Right. This is not meant to replace, it's mainly a sharing of information because it's amazing. Collectively, we know a lot, but individually, mm -hmm. there are big gaps in what we know about what's available to us today. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, it's intended to kind of be an informal supplement to the types of services Absolutely. that the town yes. can offer. Yes, and, and a fun one that's fun. And a, and a fun one, fun one that's way. fun, that's one yep. offering some of yep. those things. Yep. So what kind of events do you have planned coming up? I know that Well, uh, we've just started, started out. We'll, as I say, we had our launch on the 12th of uh, okay. June. Yeah. And we will have our first formal meeting in August. Okay. It'll be a backyard event where basically we're going to come together and find out about these interest groups and who is interested and we'll pick a okay. lead person for each interest sure. area and then people will converse. The organization is meant, we, we've structured it, but as it goes on, members will determine what form it takes. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, essential to the sustainability and the vibrancy of the organization. Mm. 
Hmm. So, so what do you uh, kind of foresee as, as, do you foresee less of a formal kind of structure based organization, more of an informal kind of? Uh, well, there, it'll be formal in, only in the sense that there will be planning as to the monthly okay. events. There'll be featured speakers, and of course, being north of Boston, there's an enormous set of resources sure. to draw on of all kinds. Um, first couple of meetings in the fall, we plan to talk about things like an antiques roadshow because mm. we have here living in Reading one of the foremost antiques dealers, retired, and his son now, sure. I guess, did uh, <laughs> uh, Deval Patrick's house. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, then there'll be a session, for example, on the shine counseling, which is to advise people about medications and save them money. Mm -hmm. But then more fun things, perhaps delving into international affairs, uh, the Camden Conference from Maine has mm -hmm. all these archives of things. Okay. Um, speakers from Harvard or, or wherever. Sure. I would think given that it's an election year also. I mean, there's plenty yes. of interesting topics to talk about uh, just in general, but also for people who are, are looking at specific things that are going on in, in the country and right. how they react to that's them. Right. So as you talk about the coffee clutches, that's the type of thing yep. that could come up. Yep. Um, so, uh, Marianne, I just wanted to ask you, as, as again, as a health professional, mm -hmm. when someone is trying to age in place, um, you, you mentioned the socialization is, right. is an important piece and, and, and part of that. Uh, when a person is seeking to socialize, kind of how do typ people typically reach out when they don't have this type of organization to, to go for? Well, I, I think that can be problematic for a lot of people. Um, some people uh, go through the senior center and they use that fairly mm -hmm. actively. Um, some use their neighbors, for example, for services or for um, socialization. For a lot of people, they're alone. And having yeah. done some work in community health care, I've seen many people in homes who are either alone or whose family members are their sole caregivers and they're in the home and they're very, very isolated. So to have this type of an opportunity to, to reach out either for, as Tom said, some short-term services or sure. the ability to get out into a social setting for education or a program right. would be wonderful for them. Yeah, it, It's really an opportunity, Kevin. I mean, people go to a church because they're interested in spiritual thing and that's mm -hmm. the focus for them getting together. There's a garden club, a very vibrant var garden club. Right. People come together for gardening interests. Well, the interest here is people want to stay in their own homes because they love their own homes. It's also very much more economical than going to any sure. institutional yeah, setting. Sure. So beyond that aging in place, it's a broad, much broader than any particular church or garden club or any specific thing. And that's what brings people together. And that's why we say Reading Neighbors Network, socializing with a purpose. Mm. Purpose is to age in place, but also have fun, share common interests, right. and so forth. Right. Well, it sounds like a very interesting concept. Now you're just getting started, but it yes. sounds like something that uh, could really grow in town over the years. And as we know, the the aging population, I mean, you said we're all aging, and that's true, but but the but the you know population is aging, and we, and we know the largest growing group of people in the country is seniors. So, Well, we have about a little under 4,000 over 65 in Reading right now. Okay. And by, I think, uh, in the early 20s, it's going to be 7,500 or 8,000. Wow. And so you're talking a third of the population. E exactly, yeah. exactly. And it's interesting because, as I said, we benefited from Lexington and what they've done over right. the years and built on that. But very recently, Concord has con contacted Lexington and us. They're interested okay. in it. Arlington has contacted them and us about, again, this kind of organization. Sure. This organization is really a parallel to the village concept, which started with Beacon Hill Village in 1998. Mm -hmm. But it's less, less a formal organizational, almost quasi-business with an executive director. It's operated by virtue of the people. Our steering committee replaces right. that. Right, all right. Interesting. So, it's, so it looks like uh, just getting started, but it's already kind of part of a movement in the area. Um, and probably other towns will be joining as they see the successes that you have and that some of these other towns Hopefully. have along the way. So if someone were interested, you mentioned you have 40 members already signed up and, and interested. But if someone were interested in, con in getting involved, how, how would they do that? Um, there, we have a brochure, and that will be at, available at the library. Okay. And we have a website, which is www.com. Reading NN dot club 
www.reddingnn.club. Right, and there was an article in this Thursday's Chronicle which okay. summarized what we've, where we've been, sure. how we've gotten here, and has reference to that uh, website. Sure. So people can contact you through their website. If yes, they're interested? there's there's a one page has contact information and an email address. Okay. In, info at reddingnn.club. Okay, excellent. So if someone were interested, they can, can yes. get a hold of you there. Yes. All right. Well, that sounds excellent. It sounds like you're uh, really uh, just getting in on the ground floor of what's a swell of things that are going on in the area, and it looks like it's going to be something that's that's very valuable. Well, we're excited for, about it for our community. Excellent. Well, I thank you for being here today, Tom, and sharing a little bit about that. Thank you here, Marianne, yeah. for sharing your perspective as well, and and uh, we look forward to hearing of the great successes that thank come you. Thank you. in the future. And so we thank our guests for being here today, and we thank you for watching. You're watching Community Conversation here on RCTV. We'll be back in just one moment. Hi, I'm John Doherty. I'm the superintendent in the Reading Public Schools, and you are watching RCTV. Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Trokakis. On the menu today, we have Roman-style lamb with artichokes, barley pilaf, and thick and creamy yogurt-filled crepes. So let's get started. This is my first production, and uh, we like doing it. We really do. It's, uh, it's enjoyable. I enjoy the creativity because it's an artistic presentation and we get to have good food and share it with the community. I love the, the people here, uh, getting the camaraderie about the, the editing and the taping and it's great, it's wonderful. I definitely would encourage others to get involved. It's a, it's a great experience. The, the staff and, and everyone here has really been very supportive. For more information about RCTV, visit us on the web at www.rctv.org. Hello, I'm here today with David Zeke and with Ray Porter, who are here representing the Reading Climate Advisory Committee. Nice to have you here today, gentlemen. Thank it's you. Good to nice be here. To be. Well, one of the things that I have as kind of a first question when I hear about the Reading Climate Advisory Committee is exactly what is an advisory committee as opposed to any other committee. Well, an advisory committee means that we are an official committee of Reading, okay. and therefore we're advising the selectmen of Reading. So okay. that's our that's our charter to, to do that. Okay, and so you're operating an advisory capacity. You're not passing rules or regulations or anything like that, but you're advising the selectmen that's on, correct, on yeah. and things to do with climate. In, climate, in energy, environment. Yes. Okay, so specifically the Climate Advisory Committee then does what? How, what, what kind of things do you advise? The, well, our the, mission the statement, on? Uh, which we have also run past the Board of Selectmen and okay. they've, they've understood, is the Red and Climate Advisory Committee is official town advisory committee, as Dave said, mm -hmm. comprised of concerned citizen volunteers, so we're all uh, citizens of the town and okay. working for the town, seeking to achieve environmental, economic, and society sustainability by raising public awareness and influencing the community including its government and the, the selectmen sure. uh, and the town, to reduce energy use and foster environmental stewardship in a cost-effective manner. Okay. So that's really our, our mission statement. Sure. So you're talking about reducing energy use, and, and, and how do you go about uh, doing that? How do, you, how, do you, how do you do that? <laughs> what is it that you do to do that? Well, we've really done a number of things over the years. Um, one is just work with the town and establish a energy conservation program, okay. which they have done in, uh, in the town government as well as some of the schools. We've worked with the community in a number of different ways to help members of the community weatherize their home mm -hmm. and have energy savings that way. Okay. We had a project with Air, uh, Earmark, which is the um, group that helps some of our special needs people by doing their homes okay. and reducing energy. But basically just giving and showing people how they can save energy and, and save money. Sure, sure. Now, do you work with the Municipal Light Department in any of those types of things? We do. I mean, that's a valuable resource. They're not limited to Reading, but, right. you know, but they're certainly important in Reading. And, and they've been a real uh, asset to us. They, they, uh, we, we held our uh, birthday fair at, okay. at RMLD. We had the bicycle swap that we mm -hmm. sponsored was held at RMLD. And we're engaged in continuing conversations with them, of course, about electricity, right? About sure. energy sources and sure. solar energy and a number of those kinds of things. Trying to encourage the light department as well as individuals to use some of those alternative Absolutely, energy sources. Yeah. So you talked about a couple of events that you'd done. You talked about your Earth Day Fair. Uh, what was the Earth Day Fair? What happened with that? The Earth Day Fair this year focused on uh, various forms of renewable energy. Okay. And we had several companies that come that specialize in that. Mm -hmm. um, I had a booth that talked about some of the environmental and energy saving features that were part of my uh, colonial home here in Reading. Okay. Uh, but a number of people talked about other things, and uh, RMLD had a booth and talked about some of the ways mm -hmm. that uh, you can get 
lower energy lights and, mm -hmm. and programs that RMLD is running. So it was really sure. a joint effort between us and RMLD. Sure. And just highlighting the things that are available to people. Excellent. And you also talked about the bike swap. What was the bike swap? This is an annual event where you were to trade in bicycles. So if you mm -hmm. have a bicycle that you no longer need, you bring it and donate it. And, and then if you need a bicycle, you can come get one. Okay. Uh, one of those that's been donated. And so a lot of people use that to kind of trade up, you know, okay. as, as the children get older and they need a bigger bicycle or sure. something. Or, sure. So that's, it's just, it works really well. They had some, this year's was particularly good. They had some 90 bicycles that were donated. Wow. You know, wow. So that's, Excellent. that's a real, real asset. Yeah, we work with Reading Cares on that. They're, mm -hmm. they're a okay. big part of our uh, team that put mm -hmm. it together. So it's a joint effort between us and Reading Cares, another community group in Reading. Sure. And do you find that that type of event helps encourage people um, bike to work or bike to school or, or that type of thing? It certainly is our goal to mm. encourage people sure. to do it. Quite often we just see a lot of kids getting their first bike or oh, trading okay. up to their second bike. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it's just a sort of a rite of passage for childhood to, uh -huh. to you know, get another right. bike. Right. So we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, climate change and we're talking about, uh, you know, energy efficiency and that type of thing. Um, and these problems or these issues seem like they're kind of global in, in nature. Uh, what can we do as a community to kind of help with some of these issues? Because it seems like we're kind of a small piece of a larger pie. Well, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of things we can do. I mean, just okay. energy efficiency is a big, is a big focus. You know, mm -hmm. just being aware of what energy you're using. You may know RMLD has this new program now to shave the peak, you know, they, right. so that's that's part of it. Just being aware of when you're using uh, electricity and, and, and it, it, for that matter, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, residents, maybe most residents, don't actually heat with electricity. They use mm -hmm. oil or they use natural gas. Uh, and so those, the same same kind of issues, that's right. that's where that's where Ray upgraded, if you will, from, okay. from oil to electricity uh, in, his, in his house. So it's um, being aware of, of those things, uh, you know, just recycling is important. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we ha we managed to get a just a dumpster installed uh, behind at the CVS parking lot for for uh, paper products. You oh, know, okay. from the businesses for the businesses there, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been we've worked too though with um, on on some a little larger issues. Um, mm -hmm. We um, encouraged our selectmen, for example, to pass a resolution supporting the gas leaks legislation that's okay. that's uh, currently before the legislature. Uh, and they and they did that. You know, uh, we had we invited uh, Representative Bradley Jones to come talk to us about mm -hmm. the energy plan. He was at that time he was on the conference committee for the solar bill. He oh, told okay. us what yep. he thought would be in the solar bill, and sure enough, it was. You know, he <laughs> he told us what he thought would be in the omnibus bill, which is currently in front of the legislature. Sure, sure enough, it is. Yeah. You know, so I mean, th there's this is a lot of communication that way, bringing sure. these issues, perhaps state issues, but also local mm -hmm. to our residents. And you feel as though you can influence the on the state a little bit there too while you're talking to one of our representatives. Oh yes, I hope yeah. so. Yeah. And uh, encourage communication with the representatives down at the community because okay. obviously he's dealing with a lot of things at the state house level. Sure. Uh, so while we invited him to speak, we also invited the community to attend. So sure. it was really a, a pretty good group that showed up. Mm -hmm. And many people who are part, not a part of our committee, although you can, we'd be glad to have you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was a, a chance really for communication to go both sure. ways. And we talked about a number of topics sure. that way. So it was a good communication all the way around. You mentioned about uh, asking the Board of Selectmen to endorse a particular bill, the gas leaks bill. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is the nature of that bill? What, is, what would that bill do? Well, there were, there were actually two bills. Okay. And they, they addressed the, the issue that some 2.7% of the gas, natural gas, that's coming into the state is actually just leaking away out of the pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we pay for that. Uh, so one of the one of the one of the bills was to pre preclude gas customers from having to pay for the leaked gas, okay. the, and and the other one was to, uh, to to say that when roads are opened up for repairs, that the gas com company comes out, checks for gas leaks, and repairs okay. the leaks. Okay. The, those in a, in a something of that form uh, actually made it into the omnibus bill. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's very likely to get past this session okay. as some version of the, of those bills. The impact on Reading is significant because as we looked at the topic, there's still a number of gas leaks within mm -hmm. Reading. Okay. And so that was really the incentive for our selectmen to act mm -hmm. was that within our town there's quite a few leaks. Um, some work on High Street 
and some other streets in that area. Uh, if you've been up that way, yeah. Well, they've been working on High Street for quite a while. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they're they're replacing a lot of gas lines there. Okay. The, our infrastructure across the board, of course, needs a lot of work. But, sure. Um, gas line in particular. So that was really the impetus to get our selectmen to act mm -hmm. um, because it affected Reading. Yeah, and I would think, I mean, you said 2.7%. Theoretically, that's a 2.7% savings that you could potentially eventually have for yes. customers as well as just efficiency. You're using almost 3% less gas. A and it's a terrible, uh, you know, greenhouse gas. Right. I mean, methane is 64 times as bad as carbon dioxide in mm -hmm. terms of retaining heat in the atmosphere. So sure. it's really a horrible greenhouse gas and just eliminating that for all those reasons. Right. It's, it's deadly to vegetation. It's, yeah. it's just... And it's just a waste. You know? Oh, that, that's good. Yeah. Any other places you've advised the selectmen to take some kind of action um, in the, not even just recent months, but in the past several years? Well, really, we've worked with them um, in conjunction with uh, RMLD and some of the programs they've had, um, both in terms of promoting the community shared solar projects mm -hmm. uh, and doing renewable energy projects. Uh, those are those are places we've had communication with the okay. selectmen. Um, to try to bring both RMLD and, and our board together. As mm -hmm. David said, Reading is just one part of sure. RMLDs. But they're still an important part, and um, having a project and projects like that right. across RMLDs um, communities would, would be really beneficial. Yeah, yeah. And David, you had mentioned RMLD's program about Shave the Peak. Maybe you should share a little about, let people know what that is. I know what that is, but I want to <laughs> hear. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a communication program mm -hmm. and says that, that they, RMLD wants to be able to notify the community you know, on those peak days, you know, peak right. summer days, possibly peak winter days. There, there are actually two peaks, and you know, there's a mm -hmm. summer and, and a winter peak. Um, and let them know that now would be a good time to shut off things, you know, if, you know, to, to, to just turn off lights, right. turn off the washing machine, you know, I mean, just, just because, because the way the, electric, the electric system works, Right. The peak prices are much higher. Um, you know, in, on a typical, um, you know, hot summer day, what what starts out, uh, I believe, uh, fifty dollars per megawatt mm -hmm. by the by the afternoon can be two hundred and twenty dollars per megawatt. So just mm -hmm. just not using the energy at the worst time. Right. Use it later. I mean, it's not don't use the energy, but it's don't right. use it now. And they want to be able to notify customers. Sure. And, and, and ask them just to, to shut it down for a while. Sure. From what I understand is, is that the rates that we pay all year are based partially on how much energy we use at that peak moment. So sure. if we can reduce that across town by one megawatt or two megawatts, we actually all save mm -hmm. across so the board. And so, the bill, yeah. so it's a big part of the billing thing. So it's not just being efficient, but it's also saving us money at the same time. Right. And it's for everybody. It's saving everybody money. Right. And similarly, they're, you know, they're, they're now considering a community solar project. You know, right. Just by having solar energy that is essentially free mm -hmm. it went, it went at the time, uh, that helps to shade the peak. I mean, it's still energy. It's still being used, but it doesn't right. cost that, that premium right. price when we use it. Sure, sure. In regards to alternative forms of energy, particularly solar in this area, are there any initiatives or anything that are happening right now would encourage people to, to switch to solar or to use part of their energy as solar right now? When we, we think about solar, we often think about solar voltaic and mm -hmm. uh, putting panels on your home, and certainly there's a number of homes in Reading that are well suited for that. For those that aren't, we, uh, Dave mentioned the community shared solar projects and right. giving opportunity for people to um, be a part of that, certainly uh, projects that we'll be doing. But there's solar uh, thermal for hot water. Mm -hmm. um, the, I have a ground source heat pump system in my house, uh, which draws heat from the ground. Uh, other people have used um, air-to-air -air heat exchange for cooling uh, okay. a room and keeping things. So all of these projects have uh, so are supported by RMLD and can get rebates through them. Mm -hmm. So really there's a number of projects. Uh, there's a hot water system, if you have electric hot water system, you can be on a metering program, which right. again works towards shaving the peak, but also helps you uh, reduce the cost for that. Right. So it's so many things that are going on, and, and as a committee kind of geared toward environmental conservation, just communicating these things to the mm -hmm. community is mm -hmm. a big part of what we're trying to do. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for being here today and sharing with us a little bit about what the work of the Climate Advisory Committee is, and I look forward to seeing what's going to come in the future uh, with some of this as well. So we thank uh, David Zeke and Ray Porter for being here with us today. You have been watching Community Conversation on RCTV. We'll be back in just one moment. Approaching from the